Get those finger guns, James. You like finger guns? Yeah. You like it, huh? Yeah. Bring, I, bring that Jersey Shore out. When I shoot it to you, what, what, do, you, what do you feel? <laughs> I feel all Instant of it. Euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ew. Ew. Welcome, everybody, to the HB Half Hour. This is episode five. Oh, is it? Already. Oh. With us in the studio, as always, is James Blackman, <laughs> at Amos Blackman. Amos, A-M-O-S, Blackman, B-L-A-C-K-M-O-N. Yeah. Uh, this broadcast is sponsored by Jen's Sweet Stuff. They make homemade artisan caramels. Caramels? It's caramel. Car- caramel? What do you say? Caramel or caramel? I say caramel. Caramel, good. Any- yeah, You're anyways. a normal person. Yeah, so they make caramel, toffee, and other sweets. You can go to... Spreezy.com slash Jen's Sweet Stuff if you want to check out her products. Okay, Jen. Yes. Um, If you would like to sponsor a broadcast yourself or if you have a brand or product that you want to be featured on the show, email me at thehonestbachelor at gmail.com or message me on any of my social media pages. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show monetarily, if you just want to throw cash our way, we have Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. And now that Bitcoin's on the rise, you can send us Bitcoin, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Two more weeks yeah, if it goes if it goes back down, you know. Yeah. Switch the regular stuff. Uh, any contribution is greatly appreciated. It just goes right back into the show. Uh, someone sent some money and it bought James a mic stand. So every little bit Thanks, counts. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> every little bit counts. That was beautiful. You like that? <laughs> All right. So this week's topics they are history, opinion, news, entertainment, sports, and technology. History is back. History's back. Yeah, so you're going to oh. learn something very, very new today that's going to be <laughs> very important to you, for you to know. Okay, so for history, breakfast cereal. Uh, this doesn't sound that interesting, but it started out as a health food. They, people were watching what they ate, espe- or they weren't watching what they ate, especially in the morning. Yeah. They would eat pork, drink whiskey, and they'd pound coffee, so they weren't feeling too great. So a doctor, James Caleb Jackson, decided to open a water spa where people would go on diets, exercise, and then they would eat a rock-hard bran flour and water mix shaped into a brick, which would make it the first-ever granola. Well, it was so hard, they had to soak it in milk overnight to prevent you from breaking your teeth. Needless to say, the bricks didn't become all that popular, uh, so it inspired John Harvey Kellogg to create his own granola in 1881, which he made in order to get people to stop masturbating. Huh. <laughs> he thought that a bland diet would translate into people being less horny. Well, that backfired. And people started masturbating more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was going to go on. <laughs> Which cereal exactly? My family. I, I do have a few questions. How did he know how often other people were masturbating? Why was he concerned with their masturbation habits? How often is too often? Was, there, was this a problem he had that he's trying to solve for himself, but instead he told everyone he's concerned for a friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did the experiment work? How would he know? Was there some big lab where he kept people that ate his cereal and then waited to see if they masturbated? Who were these subjects? Why did they sign up for the study? Did they know they were in the study? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Which cereal was the most effective? Why? Yeah, so when I was researching this, Mm -hmm. I found a a bunch of tapes, some rare tapes of what it was like in the lab. Yeah? Yeah. Let's take a look at it. As long as it's for nothing weird. Yeah, well, that was interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. (laughs) Moving on to opinion. Uh, This one, I know. This is going to be hotly contested. I am treading on very dangerous waters here when it comes to being monetized on YouTube. Yeah. Because I have some strong opinions about this. I was an athlete in high school and college. James, you were an athlete. Mm. Uh, And so I'm going to be very careful discussing this. Mm -hmm. The topic is transgenders in sports. So the reason why I even thought about this is because the Boston Marathon, they recently decided that you no longer have to uh, transition at all in order to compete as a woman or as a man in the Boston Marathon. And the Boston Marathon is notoriously hard to qualify for. Wow. Uh, it's one of the hardest marathons. But the woman's time is significantly easier to qualify 
to run the Boston Marathon, and they require no proof whatsoever. You don't have to prove that you're a woman. You can show up looking just like a guy and just say, I'm a woman. Uh, no, you don't have to show any signs of transition. They say that they will not question you. That was, that's literally in their statement. They say, we will not question it. All you have to do is just say that, and we're going to take your word for it because uh, transgenders have been through so much. We don't want to make it even worse by questioning it. Should a male transitioning to a female be allowed to compete in female sports? Male to female, should they be allowed to compete in female sports? Because I have no issue whatsoever with a female transitioning to a male competing in male sports. Yeah. It's not an advantage. Yeah. But even a female transitioning to a male competing in female sports, that's an advantage because they're taking testosterone in order to transition. Mm -hmm. If we're going to say that there's no such thing as gender and gender is just a construct, then why are there female and male sports? What's the point? Yeah. Why is there a WNBA? Why is there an NBA? Exactly. Why is, why is the basketball smaller in the WNBA? You have smaller hands. That's a, that's a construct, though, their hand size. Yeah. <laughs> no, but a woman right now, so the, the NBA actually considered drafting uh, Brittany Griner, I think is her name? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In, into the NBA. So a, a female can, has always and can always right now play in a male sport. Yeah. That, sh that should be 100% allowed. Yeah. If, as long as they don't have to reduce the standards, a woman can do anything that a man can do. Yeah. But the reality is when it comes to physicality. It's just you have, you have a LeBron James. Yeah. Going up against any woman and then, like, come on. Yeah, there is no female LeBron James. There's no six foot eight, 280 pounds of pure muscle woman. Yeah, so women are catching up in sports, but even as, so when you look at it percentage wise of where women are 50 years ago versus men 50 years ago, and then women 50, or now versus men now, women percentage-wise, have increased by more. Of course, yeah. But that's just because they've had further to go. Yeah. And men have been competing in sports and more. So that's led some people to think that the only reason women aren't good at sports is because they haven't been playing as long. No, that's not true. Of course it's not true. So I, I looked at testosterone levels. So how they measure it is nanograms per deciliter. Okay. So a, the, so a woman, their range is between 8 and 60 nanograms per deciliter. Mm -hmm. A man at the low end is 270 to 1,070 nanograms per deciliter. So the IOC, they have a minimum, or sorry, a maximum standard for transgender people. If, if someone is transgender and they want to compete in the Olympics, they have to have their testosterone levels down to 280 nanograms per deciliter maximum. To put that in perspective, again, a woman's range is somewhere between 8 and 60 and transgender athletes are allowed to compete up to 280. So that's more than four times that of even a super high-end woman testosterone-wise. Yeah. Testosterone helps you in sports, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, the, these transgender athletes, the, the, the big debate going on is whether or not they have an unfair advantage. I, I, is, it, is, it, is it common sense? No, apparently not. I feel like this is common sense. Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of even doctors saying that there actually is no advantage, uh, which is ridiculous. So transgenders make up 0.3% of the population, 0.3%. That's very few for those of you that aren't great at math. Uh, yet, some of the top athletes in the world happen to be transgender, such as Fallon Fox in the UFC. She's, she's not the top fighter by any means because she doesn't have technique, but she's bashing women's heads in. Yeah. And she's a transgender UFC fighter. And then there is a, uh, there's a kid in Texas that was transitioning female to male. Yeah. And she, now he, wanted actually to compete in the male uh, division. Yeah. But wasn't allowed because biologically uh, she was a female. This is all very confusing to talk about. This girl, now boy, wanted to compete against the boys, but they wouldn't let him compete yeah. against the boys. He had to compete against the girls. And so, not surprisingly, he won. He beat everybody's ass, not just one year, but the next year, too. Won two state championships mm -hmm. uh, in, is that fair? in wrestling. And then there was a transgender kid in Connecticut, also won two state titles in sprinting. And then there was Castor Semenya in the Olympics, uh, absolutely destroyed all the other women in sprinting. Uh, the, 
the difference though with caster is caster is actually intersex, so it was born with both parts. Yeah. And so they, can, when someone's intersex, they have to choose. Okay, you have kind of a vagina, of kind of a penis. Which one do you want? Uh, vagina, because the penis is messed up. That's normally how they go. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. ah, that penis is mangled. So easier to dig a hole than build a pole, is the saying. So they went with the. I hole. don't think that's a saying. It is a saying. No, it's a- <laughs> <laughs> it is. I just make that you up. Yeah, <laughs> I just sit in my room. You know, it is easier <laughs> to dig a hole than to build a pole. Here's some of the counter arguments. So some of the counter arguments is they're saying it's not fair that transgender people don't get to compete just because they're transgender. They should be allowed to compete against girls. If a transgender boy, so or I guess it'd be a transgender girl. If a yeah. boy transitions to a girl, they think that that girl now can compete against other biological girls. The thing with sports is it doesn't have to be fair. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Losing isn't fair, and that's kind of inherent in sports. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, so just on a personal story, I was, I was diagnosed with a heart murmur when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And so I had to get an echocardiogram before I competed. I ran long distance. I ran a cross country and track. And the doctor every year would make me sign a form basically saying I'm taking responsibility for running even though I'm not technically med- medically cleared so that the doctor, I couldn't sue them in the end. Yeah. My family couldn't sue them if I died or if something terrible happened. And so if, if it is a medical condition to be transgender, if that's, if that's your argument that it's a medical condition and they shouldn't be allowed to or not be allowed to compete just because they have a medical condition, that's not true. There's tons of medical conditions that would prohibit you from competing in a sport. Yeah. Not everyone gets to get what they want all of the time. Like sports, I think, are a very different realm. Yeah. And, and this, sports are a privilege. They're yeah, not a right. I, I was. I swear, I was just about to yeah. say that, man. It's a privilege, dude. Like, yeah. like driving is a privilege. Yeah. Sports is a privilege. That's why if you get, if you were in high school or in college, or you got caught drinking underage, and you get a code or um, you get flagged for something you get suspended because mm-hmm. that's a privilege to play a sport. Right. Not everyone gets to do it. Yeah. Not everyone gets to do it at the top level. Yeah. So any advantage you have or disadvantage you have, that's what you have and that's what you have to work with. Those so, are the cards. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to be a six foot six black dude and play basketball and I was dealt a genetic yeah. uh, bad hand. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> hey, what can I say? Now I'm only a six foot six white guy, which sucks, you know. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> he doesn't look six six. I think you have to look at each each sport differently mm-hmm. but yeah man like like if, if a boy who transitioned to a girl uh let's, for, again for the wrestling mm-hmm. dude it is so technical and so like it, it's you're you're using every body part right males naturally have an advantage in the sense of the strength and how fast like i don't i i'm not a, a scientist on how all this works but i can tell you right now my like I've I know women who are great wrestlers, mm-hmm. but there's just some things you can't do with, you can't do like physically that men can do. Right. Well, that's why we went through testosterone levels. The testosterone levels that's what gives you muscle density. We also have thicker bones than women. People you say about black guys. Yeah. Like yeah, black guys have uh, more muscles. That's just naturally unfair. And then they use all the study. So it's like okay, the people who are making those arguments. What would you say about a woman then? If if you're going to say that, I've heard that my entire life. Yeah. Yeah, and the, that so you brought up an interesting point. So when we talk about testosterone levels, it would vary on sport. There'd be certain sports where it wouldn't matter if you're yeah. stronger, like volleyball, for badminton. example. Badminton. Yeah, badminton. Who cares? You could make an argument, I guess, for golf or bowling or something like that. Like no one has an issue with golf. those sports. And so when they when they put in this arbitrary ten or uh, two hundred and eighty nanograms per deciliter, when they put that in. I would hope that those vary by sport. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the only thing that I have to say yeah. about it. Yeah. So then, then you would have people that if the the transgender sports do become bigger, yeah. and then there's a whole like transgender league, then you would have to put caps on saying, okay, well, if you don't transition before twelve, yeah. then you don't get to be in the transgender league. Yeah. And, and so now you're in another th- because that the, creates another problem. Yeah. So then even further further in. The, the further in you go, and now you're encouraging earlier yeah, exactly, transition. Exactly. And, like, this isn't, no, nowhere in here do we say we don't dislike, or that we dislike transgender people, or we're against it, or anything like that. That's not even the argument. The argument is that this is really, really hard to pin down. And for me, this is where I fall, this is where the opinion comes in. I don't think 
that if you transition to female from male, you should be allowed to compete. It should be seen as a medical condition that makes you ineligible. Yeah. That's, that's my thought. Uh, so if, if your gender is so important to you, more important than playing the sport, you have to choose one or the other. No, no, I agree. And if you are a male transitioning to female, you have to compete against other males. Yeah, so share, share your comments. Let us know what you think. I know there's going to be uh, quite a few people who are going to be upset and think that we're coming from a, a bigoted or mean place. Not at all. All right, so leave your comments on the YouTube video. DM me, DM James. Let us know what you think. We're going to be right back after this sketch from Ricky Eugene Brown. Not little angels no more, you know what I'm saying? Hey, she grew in her body. I'm telling you that right now. Okay. Where my girl, my nigga? Okay. And this is Trey. Yeah. This is Big Trey. Oh, 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 oh. Why is Big Trey? Just because he was tall. He was yeah, that's down. He like I'm six He's months. Big man, shoulder and everything. Loved her. <laughs> Ever since I was a little boy, man. That's what we paid a red light, green light, red light, green light, red light, green light. Red light, green light. Red light, green light. Okay, little pistol. Angus, big top, get out. Excuse you, boo. He is Amos and I am Big Trey. Man, I don't give a f nigga. Get the f out. What the f nigga? You need to stop messing with broke niggas. <laughs> right. You don't got to save him, boo. What the f is that? I, I kind of, yeah. Ricky! And we're back. That was the sketch from Ricky Eugene Brown. You can follow him on Instagram. Ooh. What's with you always playing a gay dude or an effeminate dude? I guess I'm really good at it. <laughs> Why well, didn't you do like uh, what's that called when you get really into a role where you're method. like that all the time? Method yeah, method. you were method acting oh, for, that <laughs> for that role. <laughs> dude, it's just an Instagram sketch. I have to get in. I that. gotta do it. <laughs> mm. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've been moving on now to news. Uh, so this is a ridiculous story to me. I thought it was an Onion article. I really did. So in the wake of London's murder rate surpassing that of New York City for the first time, Mayor Sadiq Khan announced new knife control initiatives. He said London would increase police patrols, grant extra stop and search powers to police on certain patrols, and increase efforts to take people out of gangs by giving them job training. He reiterated the city's position that there is no need for anyone to carry a knife. Heard that before. Yeah. And he says, there's no excuses. There's never a reason to carry a knife. Anyone who does will be caught, and they will feel the full force of the law. At what point are we going to say, you know, there's some bad f***ing people out there. No. And they're going to kill you no matter what you do. Yeah. You can't make everything illegal. What the hell are we doing? Knife control? This is like the NRA made fun of people being like, well, you know, if knives kill more than guns, why don't you ban knives? And everyone's like, oh, we're not going to ban knives. And then the UK's now, like, hold on a minute. Let's ban knives. <laughs> yeah, the UK's like, that's a good idea. They, they ban guns, right? Yeah, yeah. They have a full-on ban. Even, even their police don't have guns except for a special police force. Yeah. So only some of their police carry guns, and they call them in, like like the SWAT team, basically. And they were going to have a rock ban, where they banned all the rocks. <laughs> are they going to ban fists? Like, yeah. Are they going to start cutting people's arms? There's no reason for anyone to have clenched fists. Yes. If we <laughs> see you clench your fist, prison time, immediately. Yeah. Cut those off. And there's no way this will adversely affect minorities. No way. No. No, yeah. not at all. Stop and search has always been completely unbiased. Yeah. Jesus, man. <laughs> At some point, it's just going to be like, there's no reason to be outside interacting with other people. Yeah. Like, what the hell is going on here? God. Knife control. And so people that say, you know, they're never going to come after your guns in the United States. No one's trying to take your guns away. Blah, blah, blah. Well, if your reference is always look at Europe, look at the UK, look at Japan, and these are countries that are moving in that direction, I think that maybe there's a legitimate concern there. Yeah, so that's a ridiculous story. Not, that wasn't the only Onion-type article that I found. So the next one is, 
they gave out little bats to teachers in a Mill Creek school. Little souvenir bats that you get out at, like, baseball games. These are 18-inch wooden bats to be used as a last resort. And they gave them to all the teachers, and they made sure, they made sure to let the news know that they're locked up, they're not easily accessible, they're locked up away just for a very last resort. Last resort for what? To charge the shooter and stick it up his ass? Because seriously, <laughs> you can't, there's no way these bats can stop anything. I've gotten these bats at a game. You can hit somebody and it doesn't hurt. Yeah, I know. One mother, uh, she says she doesn't see the point in introducing the bats. She says, I thought they were joking when they said they gave out the bats. And then when I saw them, I laughed. You know what I think happened with the bats is the guy went to a baseball game and then he's like, <laughs> he's like, That's a good idea. This is a great idea. <laughs> Has there been a shooting at a baseball game? You know why? There hasn't been a shooting at a baseball game. Because they gave out those little bats. Oh. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> That'll do it for news. We're going to move on now to entertainment. I actually was conflicted on where to put this story because mm-hmm. uh, it falls in all of them. News, entertainment, sports, it has it all. And I'm sure all of you have been keeping up to date and you're all abreast on this situation. What are you talking about? Tristan Thompson cheated on Khloe Kardashian. What? I, I know. This marks the very first time that an athlete has cheated on a woman in 75 years. It's unbelievable. Do you want to know why he did it, though? Why he cheated? Why? Okay. First thing first, he had to. <laughs> Explain. Okay. I'll actually read this. So one, um, not a quote, but it's from uh, The Lake Show, yo. Okay. Find him on Twitter. Oh, reputable source. Very reputable. Yeah. Tristan Thomas. Thompson. Thompson, sorry. <laughs> Tristan Thompson really cheated on Chloe four days before the NBA playoff starts. So the Cavs. Could avoid the Kardashian curse. What a remarkable move by a selfless team player. Wow. He he didn't want to have... The, you know the Kardashian curse I, is a real I am thing. very aware of it, actually. Okay. I, have, I have a lot of material on that. So I'm sorry he decided to cut the curse. And he cheated so they could break up for a bit. Only during the playoffs. He didn't want to. You're no, right. He, no. Of course he didn't want to. No, he didn't want to. His nine-month pregnant wife... Yeah. Of course he doesn't want to cheat on her. He Do loves you, her. What kind, of, what kind of monster would he be? Yeah, that would be horrible. But that curse? Come on, man. They're going to come out of the East now. I knew he was a good Look, dude. I, I want to put it here right now. The Cavs will come out of the East because of Tristan Thompson. Yes, yeah, so you're welcome, Cleveland. God bless you, Tristan Thompson. Hey, God bless you, <laughs> Tristan Thompson. He's a hero. He's a goddamn American hero. If you're going to marry an NBA player or any professional athlete... You know, do you not know what you're getting yourself into? That's what I tell women all the time. Like all these Listen, good I'm, looking I'm going to be famous later. I have to cheat now to get into the lifestyle. No, I'm just like, look, <laughs> stop going for these guys with like these ballers. Yeah. Come to a guy like me, a normal dude. That's how you, if a woman want real power, because they, they date them for the status. Be Date a you shorter a guy, a, a guy who's not that attractive. Yeah. And then people are like, wait, why are they with each other? Yeah, so your whole pitch is that you're not going to cheat because you're a good guy, but you're going to cheat later. When I get money in, if I... Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends. Yeah. No, no, I won't cheat. I won't cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got something in your eye? No, no, uh, no, I'm good. Okay. I, no, I won't cheat. No, no, no. They're, they're dating, they're trying to date all these tall guys. So they, look. That's what society they're wants. They're trying to make a super baby. That's what they're trying to make is. a slave. That's right. That's, oh, that's shit. what society's doing. <laughs> they want you to make a slave. Whoa. <laughs> that's all. It's starting to sound like InfoWars now. You know, speaking of InfoWars, Alex Jones went on the most epic rant of all time. Do we hear? Yeah. You have it? Uh, I do. So he's talking about. Well, first off, he's not really talking about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched Info World Wars, but uh, he, uh, he starts off by talking about Syria getting bombed, and somehow that sent him off on some strange rant about uh, Donald Trump's sex affairs. So here we go. And who the hell, who, who cares? Trump never said he didn't like women. Trump never said he didn't have six, seven, eight girlfriends they paid off. What do you think Roger Stone did? He wanted a beard for Trump. 
for Trump sucking There's no video of President Trump sucking a ding-dong. And so what if there was? That's a lot better than World War III, Owen. I never sucked any ding-dongs. But I'll tell you, if they were going to blackmail me to start World War III about one, I'd say, hey, I sucked a ball, golf ball through a freaking garden hose. Didn't you already tell Der Spiegel that? No, the son of a bitch walked in there in my own office when I had splattered stuff on myself and I was changing shirts. He goes, oh, that's a good shot. Let's get your shirts. And then he goes, I go, hey, have some of this chicken and sausage. So technically, I said, Jones offered me his sausage. Yeah, give me a break, you son of a bitch. I like women, not men. And if I like men, I'd be proud of it. I'd have a lot of them. But I ain't never been in bed with no man. I've been in bed with probably 300 women. And you sons of bitches sit there and you play these games, and I'm sick of it. Listen, I'm not saying that I haven't slept with a few women here and there. I've slept with tens of thousands. Okay. 15, 20, 60,000. Okay. And yeah, my penis didn't get hard at the time, and I had to take some Viagra. Viagra is a hell of a drug if you really think about it. But you're saying that you don't like peanut butter and jelly, but you like the jelly only without the peanut butter. What do you mean by that? What the f***? What is he just saying? I have no idea, dude. That show is one of the most entertaining shows, uh, I think, ever. I think he got cloned. I think the real him, the government stole him. Alex Jones, yeah. you think he's an alien? Uh, no, I, no, not an alien. I just think they cloned him. <laughs> and then if they put that guy out there to just <laughs> so who's that? throw people off. That's a clone. <laughs> and they put that guy out there um, because the real Alex Jones was catching on to the Illuminati. Mm, yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Damn. Yeah. I don't want to say I like have a shit of knowledge of this, but I do. Hmm. I've never sucked a ding dong. <laughs> and now, <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Could he be a clone? I've never had a finger up my ass. Yeah, I've never stuck my finger up anyone else's ass. What is that? He's a clone. I think he's a clone. Yeah, that's clone talk. That's if clone. I've ever heard it. Hey, look, that's clone talk. You heard it here. What's next? <laughs> We're going to be right back after this trailer for Not From Space. that it crashed and we don't know where it came from. Points the way to a population that was perhaps spread throughout the solar system. The president making an announcement there that he has called the world leaders to the United Nations, a move which brings nations small and large to the table. How often do you see billionaires being generous? I think we should put a wall around the whole country. This has generated such bad publicity. If this continues, these will be the biggest point drops ever at the closing bell. But what they have uncovered may be one of the most profound historical discoveries of our time. A series of triangular objects moving away from Mars. I'm being told by local officials that these pyramids are under high alert at this hour. The Pentagon is now confirming that alien craft have been detected approaching Earth. There's a wave of military aircraft flying over now with alien craft behind them. They're headed this way. I do think that if he's going to be giving away all these free computers, there's going to be some major backlash. It's unknown as to whether this is a specific threat or just a general prank. I hope that Bill Gates changes his mind. But the question is, where did they go? That was not from space, the movie. If you want to support the movie, below is the Indiegogo link. Uh, help support indie films and get this movie made. Get it made. We're going to move on now to sports. So the Yankees and Red Sox, they had a massive brawl, which is awesome. Uh-huh. I don't understand why anyone has an issue with this at all. Who has an issue with it? 
Uh, they always say it like taints the sport or it's a shame and no. people get suspended. But the fans want it. Fans love it. Yeah, there's actually a clip of Joe Kelly at the Bruins game. And here he is. He's getting cheered on after they show the brawl. It, it gets the fans all pumped up. Hockey fans get it. Yeah. They get all amped up. They, uh, they, they want it. Dude, like in basketball games, when we see brawl, oh, like first best. of all, the 90s, they were so Did, cool to go to games. Like my buddy, his dad tells us all the time, like, that that was real basketball. Like yeah. now, like everything's so pussy. If you don't feel like you're going to get stabbed at a game or at least decked in the face. <laughs> Will you play hard? Yeah. What are you playing for? This isn't a real game. Another great sports story. This I this is a real feel good one. Uh, Andre Ingram. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't cry. I'm not gonna say <laughs> I did or didn't, but the feels. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So Andre Ingram played in the G League. Used to be the D League. That's how long he was in it. Yeah. He was in it when it changed names from yeah. D League to G League. Uh, and actually, it was Development League before that. Yeah. So it's changed three, three times. times. Yeah, yeah. Two times. Uh, he was in it for ten years. And he finally got called up. I hate the Lakers. I hate them. I could go on a five-hour rant about how much I hate the Lakers. He does. But I'll, I'll be cheering for this guy, like Andre Ingram. It's awesome. And his debut, he scored 19 points, had three rebounds, three blocks, and then some assists in only 29 minutes. Did you watch the whole uh, build-up to it? It was on uh, the Lake Show. Um, what show? I don't know. I what. saw Luke Walton and Magic congratulating yeah, him. In. And he called his wife and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah man. I'm like, just watching that because he's so humble and he's really just like Good a very dude. well-spoken guy he tutors kids mm-hmm. of mathematics math, yeah uh i'm like man dude like this dude has really stuck it out what think about how want? many times he must have been like because you don't get paid no. anything for the g league think about how many times he must have been like what am i doing it's like minimum wage right yeah so congratulations to him that's a really awesome story we're gonna move on to technology final subject Here's a here's a strange one. Baby stroller scooter Yo, hybrid. What? <laughs> that is awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I want that. I don't think that's gonna be safe though. <laughs> your baby you rock. Your baby's in the front. <laughs> yeah. If he, you hit your baby's going bye bye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is not safe. She doesn't even have a baby in it. That's how unsafe it is. In the ad, there's no baby in it. It's empty. Go down to hug me pillow. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not just going to go past the baby mop. <laughs> Come on, fam. Do you hate your kid that much? <laughs> Honey, where's the baby? Hug me pillow. This is for chicks that like to cuddle with their dude and put their head on their chest with the arm around them. Brilliant. Smart. Hey, for men across America, we thank you. <laughs> Seriously. You know what I love? Is that in both of the pictures of the Hug Me Pillow, the, the guy is wearing a dress shirt. Yeah. So even with this pillow, they need to know that the pillow has a job. They're yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the dog umbrella. Yeah. Actually, that actually white be, people would eat that up. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this week's edition of the HB Half Hour. I want to thank Ricky Eugene Brown. You follow him at Ricky Eugene Brown on Instagram. James, of course. Uh, Spreezy.com slash Jen Sweet Stuff for Jen Sweet Stuff. Make sure to follow me at The Honest Bachelor on all social media. 